Each of these very different actions have a benefit that the other doesn't have. Welcome to Jewish Meditation with Rabbi G. We are in the middle of the series, Ancient Wisdom for Contemporary Living, Part 4. So taking the cue from the name of the weekly parsha that we just had this past Shabbat, called Mishpatim. Mishpatim means laws, but Mishpatim are a particular kind of laws. In the Torah, we know that the laws which are given, and there are many, are divided into three, but we can subdivide them into sort of two categories. One is called Chukim, and the other one is called Mishpatim. Chukim are laws that God gave us that he did not reveal the reason. It does not make necessarily any rational sense. Even the laws of Kashrut, for example, people often say the laws of Kashrut is because it's more healthy. Well, it's actually not, not, quite, not quite like that. Schmaltz herring with, with a lot of Jewish foods, it's just not healthy. Um, so it's not quite clear why we have to keep kosher. It's one of the chukim, the red heifer and other laws. And the reason we keep them is because God said so. On the other hand, God gave us many laws that have reasons, mishpatim. They have rational reasons, they are logical, or they or the reason is explained in a rational, intellectual way. We eat matzah on Pesach because we left Egypt, we didn't have time to bake bread. We have the laws of, of, of uh, to do with between man and man, laws of damages. If you damage in a particular way, um, you've got to pay. Of course, that's logical. The Torah gives us the details of how that has to play out, and so on and so forth. But these are rational, um, logical mitzvot. And the obvious question is, why the two separate kinds of mitzvot? If God wanted us just to surrender and be obedient, he wouldn't have told us the reason for any of the mitzvot. He would have told us to eat matzah and Pesach and not explained it. If, on the other hand, God wants us to understand, he wants us to be rational, he wants us to be logical, then he would have, had, he would have explained all of the mitzvot. And the answer is deep but simple. There's an advantage in both. God wanted us to do both things. There's an advantage in surrendering. Now, I know that's not quite so popular nowadays. Everyone talks about expressing their own truth, their own authenticity, and so on and so forth. And therefore, there's somewhat of a resistance just to surrender when it doesn't feel comfortable. But surrendering and obedience has a tremendous depth to it. It recognizes and acknowledges that we are limited, that we are mere mortals, we have a limited life potential, and we have a limited intellect. We, we acknowledge there's something that exists that is beyond us, that transcends us, and surrendering to that force, to that power, to, to that God, gives us the ability to go beyond ourselves, to unlock our, ourselves from our own limitations, from our own prison, from our own trap, and to become connected to something higher than us, to go beyond ourselves. This is true whether in the case sometimes it's how we, how we appreciate and acknowledge the opinions of other people or in a more broader spiritual sense it's how we surrender to the mitzvot that we specifically don't understand. We do them because we don't understand and that's its greatness. Its greatness is that we're prepared to put ourselves to a side and to go beyond ourselves and connect to something higher. Yet there's an amazing benefit of understanding because when God wanted us to serve him, when God wanted us to um, live a meaningful life, he wanted all of us to live. He wanted every part of our being to be connected. Now, when you surrender and you do something you don't like or, you, or you're uncomfortable with, so your hands are doing the action, but not necessarily are you fully present, not, not necessarily your mind, your heart, your entire being is present in the experience. So surrendering has and its amazing strength, but it lacks sometimes when we do something from a surrendering point of view and perspective, we are doing it mechanically. We are lacking the full presence of our m- m- thinking, of our emotions, of our full being. And therefore we are given both. Therefore God gave us the chukim and the mishpatim. He gave us chukim to teach us the power of surrender. He gave us the mishpatim and he told us to learn, to understand, to absorb, to internalize, to explore. Because he wants the full us to be there. He wants us to understand as much we can. He wants us to, to be there, to, to serve him with every part and every fiber of our existence and our being. 
Therefore, the combination of both is tremendous. We're prepared to surrender, we're prepared to be obedient, but we're also prepared to get involved and to really serve Him and be present in the moral and meaningful and purposeful life that we lead with every part of us. And the truth is that this has to do with different parts of our soul. And let's explore this and let's meditate on this. Just relax. Become present as much as you can. Close your eyes and turn your attention to your breathing. In and out. As we always say, every breath is an expression of the soul. The nishima is an expression of the nishama. But the soul has many layers. The conscious layers of the soul is behavior, emotion, and cognition. Then there's the deeper part of our soul, the subconscious, and even deeper than that, the essence of our soul. As you breathe, just think about the soul. Think about the conscious part of the soul. Think about the depth of the soul, the spark of the soul, the godly infusion of the soul. Both parts of our soul are so important. The depth of our soul, the purity of our soul gives us the ability to transcend ourselves, to connect to something higher. Whenever we're feeling stuck, think of your godly spark at the core essence of your being, giving you infinite potential, carrying with it the infinity of God. You could rise above, you could go beyond yourself, you can free yourself from your own prison. But turn to the consciousness of our soul. We need to use our brain, use our heart, use every part of us to be part of the process, to become present with every part of who we are, to connect, not just mechanically, but properly. Come back to where you are and try to keep those two thoughts at the same time. Hokim and Mishpatim. Have a wonderful day.